Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 19 of the Diary of a Security Consultant, the show where we talk all things security and security consultancy. Uh, Tony O'Brien here from uh, Security Operative Consultancy Services, uh, back after a week. And in this episode, I want to talk about something that's kind of, I suppose, personal but professional, and that is understanding business as a security professional. Uh, as a business, we've kind of grown organically over the last couple of while, uh, years, and it's only this year really that I've started to put any little bit of structure on that, supported by some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about uh, in this video. I'll try to keep it short. It's a pretty busy week. It is Monday morning. Uh, we've got two audits coming up for clients this week, so today and tomorrow is pretty much taken up on that. Last week, we had uh, three protective uh, services projects on, uh, so it's been really, really busy. Training is go, go as, as normal. Um, but I want to take some time out to talk about this subject because as well as it's been really a busy professional time, I suppose, uh, for me and for us as a company, uh, I've also had a bit of a personal milestone this week, which was that uh, I finally got my final results uh, from a four-year business degree that I undertook. And some would say naively, some would say silly, uh, some would say probably a little bit optimistic. In the middle of starting a business, I decided to undertake a part-time uh, business degree and university i did that while working a full-time job and, and stuff like that uh, i'm growing a business and thankfully made it through with a result that i'm happy with and my degree was in business and that's the point of this this kind of video is at the time a lot of people said to me why don't you do a degree in security management why are you focus on business you know uh, and i suppose for me one of the fundamentals was well when clients are coming to me, they already expect me to know about security. And that's not to say that I don't have security qualifications or I don't continue to do security qualifications because I, I absolutely do. I, I do at least one self-development program related to security every single month. Uh, but my feeling on it was, well, what one of the issues I see in the industry is that security vendors and security providers try to sell the client what they have to sell and not what the client wants. And misunderstand or show a lack of uh, business outside of their own business and that's one of the things i think holds back the industry and i suppose going in and studying business for, for four years it gave me a really good insight uh, i was working with mature students a lot of group projects and things like that and during that time i got to work with people who worked with corporates who worked in education themselves and also who were starting their own business as well and i got so much from that in terms of networking in fact if it was to say what I got the most of, I certainly got knowledge and I certainly got skills and I certainly got resources that I can use to grow my business. But one of the biggest things that I got from those four years in university was the network that I grew with people who I was working with, all sorts of things. And I learned probably as much from them as I did from other lecturers. But I, I also got stuff that I could bring to the security industry itself that I see as lacking. So for example, uh, stuff that I would never have been exposed to as a, a person growing a small business but working with a lot, a lot of corporate clients is the amount of time and effort that they have to put into things like uh, recruiting talent and retaining talent and HR and culture within an organization and how important that is to them uh, to organizations in terms of one how they conduct business but two what they're looking for from vendors and suppliers and it gave me a really good insight as a business as a supplier into how to deal with corporate organizations and it's really helped me grow in terms of understanding uh, how they think, how they act, and how they feel about business, and how important culture is. In addition to that, you know the people within it and the functions and, and stuff like that. Uh, one of my big areas of interest was in talent, uh, talent management, uh, HR, and, and strategy, and things like that. And then obviously when it got to the risk management and governance parts, which that was an area I was already particularly strong at. Um, and I was able to support other people on the course in that, but I gained so much in other areas that I wouldn't have known about. You know, for me, you know, how to do proper forecasts and understanding economics and how the economic cycle worked. These are all things I think that sometimes is lacking within security practitioners, and particularly individual security practitioners. Just understand, yeah, we've all got our own ethics and stuff like that, but understanding business ethics, but mostly I suppose the biggest thing was understanding business culture that I got from that. Um, I suppose one of the other things that it wanted me, and you will probably get this with any academic thing, so I'm saying the benefits of understanding business that I gained was fantastic, but I think the, the benefits of academia in terms of what, what we can take from that 
Um, I foolishly at the start decided I was going to go in there, I was going to read every textbook, every bit of reading, all that, and I could slowly find myself burning out. And then I started to pinpoint the areas that I really need to concentrate on and focus on those areas. And that taught me a lot about my own personal work and stuff like that, not to be trying to do everything, to focus on the things that I was good at, um, find out what my niche was. Uh, I did a fantastic module in uh, university on innovation. Probably my favorite module over the whole year, innovation and entrepreneurship, about how you select your product and how you drill down into will this work and how you do your market research. And it's very, very eye-opening. For many years, I had thrown products out there as stuff that I thought the customer wanted and then kind of reverse engineered that. So, sorry, I, I say that incorrectly. I threw it out there as something that I was really good at and reverse engineered it into something that the customer wanted instead of doing it the other way around, which is one of the things that I really picked up. But even in terms of you know, academic writing and how uh, academic writing can benefit you and how, I suppose, taking more out of your writing or document proposals and costings and SOPs and all that kind of stuff, where less is, less is more in terms of conciseness. So, um, and I think that's something I wouldn't again if I'd have gone down traditional security or risk management route. And that's not to say that I won't. I fully intend to go on now and go on to a master's in a security related field, I suppose. But um, I was one of those guys, and I've said it before on here, that I left school when I was supposed to leave school. I went straight into the workplace and I went back afterwards and did some academic stuff. And I think I got tremendous value from that. I was on campus with young people, uh, 18, 19 years old, looking at them going, I don't think that I would have hacked academia at their age. But for security professions, mature security professions, I think that yes, absolutely, having an academic background is important. But one of the things not to overlook when we're looking at those courses, like I said, we have a tendency to go for risk management, security management, um, I suppose criminal justice, those sort of things. And they're all fantastic, don't get me wrong. But don't overlook how important an understanding of business is. And that's what this program gave to me, I suppose, over the last over the last four years. Even if you don't go down the route of academia, I would say, if you're going down those traditional routes of learning, don't neglect to look at business. And if you're doing your uh, CPD work and your professional development work, is understanding how business culture works, understanding how businesses make decisions, understanding how budgets and forecasting work, how talent retention works, how attracting talent works. Um, how training and development works in organizations, how they select vendors, uh, stuff like that, how innovation works and why innovation is so important. Um, sustainability and the growth of sustainability in the business world. Um, trends in the business world and how they're adapting. Uh, one of the things that one of my lecturers said, and it stuck with me, and it's supported me so much since then, he says, read what your clients are reading. He said, don't be afraid, and I would have been traditional, you know, pick up the phone and look up Twitter or whatever the, the case might be for my, for my news and stuff. He says, some of the best things you can have, he says, subscription to the Financial Times, uh, subscription to the Harvard Business Review, you know, all the things which are, you know, there's an expense to them, certainly, uh, but very, very much so. And I wonder at the time of the benefit that I get from that, and he says, that's what your clients are reading. If you're in the business world, that's what you're trying to read. If you're a supplier to that world, you need to understand what they're reading and the information that they're consuming. And that gives you a really good indicator. And I took that into the, into the security world as well, in terms of, well, what are our adversaries? What are the threat actors that we're dealing with out there in terms of cyber criminals, terrorists, you know, your regular run the mill criminals, protesters? What information are they consuming? So that I know, well, how are they likely to act on consuming that information? Or what are the likely threat vectors and stuff like that? So it's just something I said I put out there as a thing. You know, whatever it is you're studying, studying is important. Having that growth mindset is don't neglect the study of business and how business can benefit you. We might be in the security industry, but the security industry is a business. And in our own little silo, we tend to focus on what we provide, not necessarily what the world wants. And that's an important thing. And we can't provide what the world wants unless we understand what the world wants, the business world wants. So for me, that's all. I'm going to see you all next week. I've got another one coming up. Article coming out this week as well. It will probably be out before this video is in, uh, in terms of dealing with fastball security projects and some of the tools that we use to do it. And then we've got another video coming up next week, which is about security training and how we deliver skills-based security training in a virtual environment using a model called Edict model, which is well known around the in education service. So looking forward to that. Until next week, this is Tony O'Brien, Security Operative Consultancy Services. Thanks again for listening and see you guys next week.